didn't think she was quite up to the task of, of being this son's girlfriend. And they had had a particularly difficult uh, visit from her. And the family was kind of torn up about it. And, and the mother goes to bed and, and, and prays about it. And gets up the next morning and says, you know what God revealed to me last night? God revealed to me that I, I was mistaken about which committee I was on. I thought I was on the selection committee. <laughs> When in fact, I'm supposed to be on the welfare committee. <laughs> my job is not to tell my son who he is going to love, but to welcome whomever he loves. And I fear we make the same mistake in the church, don't we? Somehow, we, we, all of us, we set ourselves up in the position of, of being on God's selection committee. We don't get to be on the selection committee. God chooses whom God is going to love. And our job is to welcome them and to love them. By virtue of our baptism, every Christian in this world is our brother and sister in Christ. <coughs> Even and especially those with whom we disagree. Peter Akinola and I are brothers in Christ and one day we will be in heaven together. I believe that with my whole heart. And we'll get along because God won't have it any other way. <laughs> so shouldn't we start practicing getting along here? Shouldn't we try to love one another, even and especially our enemies, in the way that God loves them? Which means never writing them off, never cutting ourselves off from communion with them, never being unwilling to talk with them, time after time after time, even if we go over the same old seven verses of Scripture. God wants us to love one another the way God has loved us. We don't get to be on the selection committee. Our job is just to love those that He loves. I'm going to land. And I'm going unafraid. Because God has said, be not afraid. In the reading from Jeremiah, this, this call of Jeremiah is so perfect. Because like Jeremiah, I, I feel like such a boy. Don't you feel just like a boy or a girl sometimes? When you, when you think of what is ahead of us, changing hearts one at a time until... Uh, uh, until we get to the kingdom? I think God wants us to be bold. I think God wants us to take risks. I think that God wants us not to be afraid. Whatever you think makes you unworthy, you know what? God doesn't want to hear it anymore. As he said to, to Jeremiah, I don't want to hear the stuff about being only a boy. Be not afraid. And when you wonder what you're going to say, trust that I will put the words in your mouth. All you have to do is show up and open up your heart. It's quite simple, really. And you don't have to be Jeremiah to do it. There is someone that you know who needs you to tell them about what God means in your life and how it has turned you around and how it makes all the difference in the world. There is someone you know who feels badly about themselves and unfit to be a part of the church or they feel abused by the church and, and someone needs to tell them that the, the church they left isn't the church that is now. We are changing this church I think we are getting closer and closer to God's idea of church. And they're not going to hear it <coughs> unless you're willing to tell them. So I don't want to hear the I'm only a boy stuff. I don't want to hear I'm only the girl stuff. Or I'm only a young person. Or I'm only an old person. 
or I'm sorry, I'm tied to a wheelchair. I'm, I'm sorry, um, I'm addicted to drugs or alcohol. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm poor. <laughs> Whatever it is that's holding your back from making that witness, get over it and get on it. There's a story that's become very important to me. It's from the third chapter of Acts, and I think it's got a lesson for all of us. You'll remember that story. Peter and James are walking into the temple in Jerusalem. And there's a man known to everyone as having been lame from birth. And each day he's carried by his friends to the, to the gate, the beautiful gate, I believe, of the temple. And there he begs for alms. And he's been told by the religious people of his day that he, that he is lame because of something he has done or perhaps his parents or grandparents have done. And so that's as far as he can come. And Peter and James are walking by and he calls out to them for alms. And Peter does this amazing thing. He says, look at me. I don't have any money. But what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. And this man not only stands up and walks, but begins to run and leap and dance right into the temple. Where somewhere deep in his heart, he thought he belonged all the time. There are all kinds of people who have been told they can come as far as the door, but no farther. Women know that. Gay and lesbian people know that. Lots of people know that. They've been told that because of some infirmity, they are unworthy to come inside the temple. And our job is to say to them what God says to you and me. Listen to me. Whatever it is that's holding you back, God can heal you. And you are meant to not only walk, but run and leap and dance, and you belong inside the temple. That's the story you and I have to tell. How, how silly of God to trust us with it because we're all just boys and girls. But trust us with it, God has. And you and I are called this night to speak that truth to a world desperate to hear it. Stop with the I'm only a boy. Stop with I'm only a girl. Be not afraid. Because the God of all that is is with you every step Way. Don't be fearful about this church, this wonderful and beloved church. Let's work hard. Let's not let ourselves be walked on. Let's, let's stand up for ourselves because God loves us so much. But don't be afraid. Fear is a terrible thing. And you and I, by the grace of God, have been given the answer to all that fear. Let's share it with the world. Let's share it in the name of Jesus Christ.